Back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production of HP Discover. We're live in Barcelona. Tim Crawford is here, friend of theCUBE, crowd captain, uh, advisor to CIOs. Tim, great to see you again. Good to see you too, Dave. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, well, our pleasure. You're very welcome. Always a great guest. Um, so, let's start with HP Discover. We're here in, in Barcelona. Um, what do you think? I'm. I'm really impressed about how some of the conversations are starting to mature for HP, um, looking at the technology and how it's starting to evolve. You know, for a company the size of HP, it's hard to move the battleship. It's hard to move it forward, especially as we're starting to see newer technologies, methodologies coming from startups and uh, other innovators, smaller innovators. Um, yet we're starting to see some of that innovation come out of HP too. Uh, in their storage line, we're starting to see a bit of that. But I think the real story here is in the data and what they're doing around data. So, what do you mean by that? What, what's, where's the story is from your perspective within HP? Well, it's, it's bringing the different components of data together. So it's not just about big data, it's not just about structured data. In fact, I was in a presentation earlier today and they were talking about data generally as opposed to just talking about the big data aspect. Because it's easy to, to get sucked into the, the marketing engine around big data, but the reality is that most enterprises are leveraging much more than just what classical big data is. Um, and I think the combination of taking Haven with the Vertica and Autonomy pieces together and how they're able to, to build that correlation engine um, is pretty interesting. I'm kinda, I think that's a good point, and I'm interested to hear what Meg has to say. I think her keynote's today, uh, I think. I think um, so. And so, uh, I always make it a point to listen to the CEO's keynote, because in the past, Meg has not, in my opinion, emphasized data enough. I mean, she'll give examples, you know, talk about new style of IT and how, you know, you'd be a data-driven business, you know, et cetera, and then she'll tend to go through and tick off you know, some of the HP stuff, things they're doing, and it's hard, right, because HP's got right. this huge portfolio, she has to check the boxes, right. obviously, you know, uh, she wants to pitch her products, but, but that vision around data has been, has been lacking, not because they don't have the pieces. They do have the pieces, yeah. it's just that they haven't tied it together and, are, and articulated it. Would you agree with that? I completely agree with it, but I, let's take it a step further though. They have the right pieces, but do they, meaning they have the right ingredients, do they have the right recipe to pull <laughs> it together? So that's, that's one of the pieces. They need the right recipe, and I think they're still trying to figure that out. But there's another component here that, that can't be underestimated, and that has to do with the buying end of the equation. So it's great to talk about futures, it's great to talk about what things could be, but the reality is most enterprises are still struggling with traditional problems today. How do I deal with my 80 plus percent operational costs? How do I get away from traditional infrastructure and move more to cloud? That's great to talk about big data, it's great to talk about data as a whole, but I'm a long ways off from there, so how do I start getting down that roadmap so I can intelligently talk about data and actually get my arms around it. Well, John and I were talking earlier about HP's organization. And you know, we always pay attention to their earnings calls and listen to the calls when we're around or read the transcripts thereafter. It's better to listen to the calls because you can get the nuance. But right. you tick through the businesses at HP and they, you know, they're all flattened down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one business this last quarter was up. And, and now there's some bright spots, like converged infrastructure is growing, obviously three parts growing, but organizationally, I, I liked the way you, you said it, that they have the recipe. So I think part of the recipe has to be organization, and this is not an easy company to organize, I no. understand that, but it seems like HP's not organizing around some of the growth opportunities in a way that they, they could, and I understand it's complex, but I wonder if you could, I could get your take on that. Yeah, the, the one thing that I still see within HP is a number of silos. I mean, you, you're still seeing those individual silos around a particular service, around a particular product, and the integration isn't at the level that it really needs to be. 
but uh, one thing I am starting to hear here in Barcelona that I didn't see at HP Discover in Las Vegas is more of that integration across groups where they're able to talk about the different products and how they come together. And that's more of a conversation amongst the product groups rather than just bringing in enterprise services to tell the story. Yeah, yeah, we can do this for a fee. Right, I, I, right. And I, and, I, but I, and I think that's a really good point. And it's not integration just for integration's sake. You know, Frank, no. personally, I really don't care if HP integrates its printing business into my, my enterprise, or even frankly, it's, it's, its desktop business. Mobile, different story. Right. So get the mobile act together and then integrate that piece. Right. But certainly autonomy, and certainly Vertica, and, and I would say as well, the converged infrastructure piece, uh, and then parts of the software business maybe uh, as well, maybe some of the systems management stuff, that's of interest to me. So it's not integration for integration's sake, it's integration where it makes sense, where you can solve customer problems and drive market momentum. Does that make sense yeah, to you? Yeah, it's, it's getting past integration though and moving more towards automation and innovation. And as soon as you can get the integration under your belt and be able to move to more innovative approaches and leveraging those innovative approaches, that's where the value really kicks in. That's where you really kind of go from low gear to high gear. Without that, it's just incremental improvements. And that, the problem with that is the incremental improvements take so long to get through each iteration. And you look at the business growth and the business innovation that, that's needed, it, they just don't match up. We last saw you at uh, Amazon reInvent a few weeks ago. We didn't come on theCUBE, but we, we talked a lot. That's why I thought you were on theCUBE, actually. <laughs> we talked so much that week. But so what are CIOs, what are your, what are your CIOs telling you, asking you about cloud? What are you advising them? Let's, let's start there and then we'll get into some of the differences between say HP and others. Yeah, so number one is where do I get started with cloud? Where does it fit into my portfolio of services as a CIO? How do I leverage it to really catapult that, that, uh, that growth? So instead of being uh, an incremental improver as I go through the sequence, how do I use cloud as a way to enable me to move forward? In innovation is really what you were talking innovation, about before, yeah, right? Innovation, yeah, absolutely. But the, but the other piece is there's, and this is something that's changed just in the last 12 months, is we're starting to see a change in um, the way that cloud is being adopted and the way that the conversation is happening around cloud. Whereas even 12 months ago, I was having conversations around, well, we're going to use cloud for this specific purpose. Now the conversation is, okay, Here's what I'm trying to do as a whole, as an IT organization and leverage and helping the business out. How do I start to leverage cloud in a multifaceted way? It's a holistic conversation that's happening now, which is a much more mature conversation from the IT leader and from the organization. Well, it seems like- That's a good thing. It seems like in the early days, it was like, nah, cloud, that's a bunch of BS. And then it became sort of, well, my CFO is making me do it because yeah. uh, the, the economy's bad. And then it became the shadow IT thing. And now it's, it feels like CIOs are, are or getting it, they're embracing it, it. Yeah, it's no longer a question of, should I do cloud, should I not do cloud? It's a question of, where do I best do cloud? The challenge, I think, for that I see for most CIOs is, okay, the world is huge, how do I start to digest that and figure out what pieces fit where? Because it's really complex, and there isn't a lot of uh, autonomy from one provider to another provider. So you can't simply say, okay, well these providers are about the same and so I can do a, uh, a bake off to try and determine which provider is, is best suited for me. So you got to be impressed with, with the Amazons. I mean, they built a, a multi-billion dollar business in a, in a very short time, moving super fast. Uh, they are what they are. They're not, they're not, they're, like we said off camera, they're trying to be you know, one thing to all people, which you know, all people don't necessarily need that for all, all workloads, but nonetheless, that's Amazon's vision. So very impressive, you're at reInvent. Um, what's your take on, on Amazon? What's your takeaway from reInvent? Let's start there. Yeah, so I think uh, Amazon, has a, Amazon has a great product for what it does. And the, the challenge is that some folks are trying to, to make Amazon into, it can do everything for everyone, and that's, that's not true. Well, that's Amazon not, is trying to make that happen. I mean, over time, right? I mean, well, that's the who vision. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't, right? right? It makes a bigger marketplace that you can <laughs> start to, you can start to leverage, and yeah. uh, so that turns into greater revenue streams. But at the end of the day, Amazon has their own kind of closed-knit ecosystem that they work with, and that's it. If they don't have um, a really well-developed or help, what I would call healthy partner ecosystem that they can leverage like some of the other incumbents. 
And I think that's one of the downsides to Amazon that, and as we're starting to see just in the last uh, couple of weeks, a couple of announcements of people pulling out of their APIs, HP being one of them, right? Pulling out of the APIs to, to tie into Amazon. And that doesn't help them. Do you think that's the right move by HP? It's a mixed bag. I mean, why, I, what's I, the motivation there? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to make that decision. Because yeah. I think you, you want to have that, that interaction and that integration with something as, as broad as uh, you know, Amazon and EC2, but it's a competitor to your HP Cloud product. So why do I want to make it easy for potential customers or customers to move off of my product onto someone else's product? You know, I want that stickiness with the customer. Well, the, 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 that's a, you're right, I'm glad I didn't have to make that decision either, because it's not a no-brainer. Right? No. You can make a case either way. I mean, yeah. the, the, the case for, for pulling is obvious, right? You don't want to help Amazon give them more, Amazon doesn't need more momentum. No, no. Right? But at the same time, you know, if your customers want to drag you that way and you go a different direction, I mean, HP talks, hey, we're open. Right. Whatever the customer wants to do, unless they want to do Amazon. So there's, right. a, there's a little bit of a disconnect there, in my view. I, yeah, I think, I think as the industry starts to mature a little bit more, um, I think we'll start to see those APIs come back up in conversation, the, the APIs between different providers, because you're going to have to. You're going to have to create the, what I have said multiple times before, you've got to create those on-ramps and off-ramps. You've got to create the on-ramps to get to your product or solution, so it's easily adoptable, easily consumable but you've also got to create those off-ramps because the last thing that I as a CIO want to do is get locked into a product that is going to be like extracting the heart out of the human body. You, you just can't do that easily. And it's painful and, and pain turns into cost. Well, and, and of course then that leads to the OpenStack discussion. Of course, a lot of people in the OpenStack community, Randy Bias in particular, put forth what, I don't know, six months ago, four months ago, that, that OpenStack should embrace the Amazon a APIs. Many in the OpenStack community said no, let, let the community decide, but, but no, we don't necessarily think that's the right thing because then, and then Amazon will have too much weight over the direction yeah. of OpenStack. Again, not another easy decision. What's your take from a CIO perspective? They want that openness. I want the flexibility. But I've, at the same time, aren't they will, willing to give up some of that openness for functionality? Sure, to, oh, in, sure. And risk lock-in? Sure, especially because the, the industry as a whole is not very mature. I mean. Really, we're only yeah. talking about cloud for the last five years or so. Even for the more aggressive folks that are moving to cloud, it can be a multi-year process to get there. So those folks, those early adopters, they're trying to figure out, okay, so what's next? Where do I, where do I make my next chess move, right? Um, but in terms of OpenStack supporting that connection to Amazon, Again, I think it goes back to, you're going to have to have that level of integration, especially if, if OpenStack is truly going to become that ubiquitous player. Let's talk about HP's cloud and your take on that. So, you, I mean, you know, the HP private cloud, I get that. The OpenStack play makes a lot of sense to me. The HP public cloud, I'm fuzzier on. And then overall, HP's cloud strategy, I'm still a little bit fuzzy, fuzzy on. Maybe help us squint through that. What's your yeah, take? There, I think HP is still trying to figure that out, but the good thing is they're trying it. And they've gotten some bad press recently about, um, about trying to, to be more open and more candid. You know, here's our solution, here are the problems that it currently has, you know, so that people are aware of it. And quite frankly, there are going to be some folks that are going to say, ooh, blood in the water, let me go after it. Others are going to say, let me embrace that and say, okay, they're being honest. You know, you get the good with the bad. But the, but the other piece here is, um, I think they're also trying to figure out what's going to stick in terms of products with the consumer at this stage of the game. Because while the HP Cloud is, is an interesting solution, and even Moonshot is an interesting solution, it might have been, Moonshot might have been a great solution for the enterprise, say, three to five years ago. But today, I think it's a, it's a question mark. Because who's going to have the scale to be able to to uh, build out that level of infrastructure for a specific workload, a specific application. And the example that HP commonly uses is HP.com, their website, which is great. They've got the scale to be able to justify that. The average enterprise isn't. So I think the, the miss there isn't that Moonshot is not a great product. I think Moonshot is a fabulous solution, but I think the target for that would be the service provider market. And this is one area that I don't think gets nearly enough airplay is how are we moving from the enterprise space 
to the service provider space, when we talk about demand in the services in the classical IT organization. Yeah, bringing hyperscale to the enterprise. John Furrier's back. John, hey. welcome back <laughs> to theCUBE. Thanks for doing a quick uh, blogger relations at the Blogger Lounge. Yeah. Uh, uh, Tim, Tim, I want to chat about the scale and, and enterprise needs. So, flexibility is obviously one major factor of cloud. Agility, Amazon has demonstrated that, that you know, hey, developer focus, you know, put it out in the cloud, don't have to worry about the, the configuration of hardware. Um, but HP's always been about choice. Mm -hmm. Multi-vendor has been a core theme for HP. So what's your take on that? Obviously, what, you know, can they be the Amazon for the enterprise? Um, obviously, we're hearing some of that earlier today from Scott Weller that you know, AWS, in essence, is on their radar, on everyone's radar, and their model seems to work, except it's not purely enterprise ready yet. It doesn't have all the, 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 the flexibility in terms of choice. And yeah. no, no, no one enterprise is the same. So talk, talk about that dynamic, what's your take on that? Well, you know, uh, the way I articulate it is, and someone was mentioning earlier, being able to take really complex things and make sense of it and boil it down to something that's more, much more digestible. Um, if you look at the traditional enterprise, it has a pretty wide portfolio. It has had and it continues to have. And it's very complex. If you look at what Amazon provides and how much of that portfolio it really can um, assist with, it's a small piece of it. The bigger piece is all of this legacy footprint that exists in every single enterprise that's out there. So what are you going to do? You're going to move that legacy app to Amazon? Never. I, I just don't see it happening, I I'm sorry. It. But I, I, don't, do, I, I agree with you. But here's the thing. I do think uh, one of the pieces, kind of going back to what Dave was saying about um, the recipe and the ingredients, or, or what I was saying with Dave uh, earlier about recipe and ingredients, I think HP uniquely has all of the right ingredients to get from traditional IT. So they've got their servers, they've got their storage, they've got their networking components, great. If you're a traditional IT shop, you've got that. But they can also help you get to the service provider piece with some of the moonshot technology and have a data story to tell too. So there's traditional to transformational. Here's, here's the, the gotcha there, <laughs> is execution. Can they pull it together and execute on that? Yeah. And that's, that's I was just big, talking to someone out in the hallway question. and um, you know, the metaphor I was using was, you know, it's like they had this company of people who play all these instruments mm -hmm. and someone just kind of needs to orchestrate and kind of be maestro, if you will, right. right? So to your point, they have right. all the elements under the hood. You see in their product portfolio, they have things you know, inc incrementally moving the ball down the field, you know, run, run, get a few yards, use a football analogy. But what we're trying to figure out, and I just don't see it yet, what is the big pass play? How are they going to move the ball down the field? What is going to be that driver? How are they going to, how are they going to come out of the woodwork? Be like, hey, this is the new HP, yeah. we're a modern era of computing, big data applications, obviously cloud and big data are front and center obviously here at the show, but you know, what is that big driver? How they've, do they move the ball down the field? They've got to, they've got to have a solid, rock solid roadmap and that on-ramp to be able to move from one stage to the next stage to the next stage of progression. HP doesn't have it, most vendors don't have it today. They might have, might have it in pieces for part of their, their product strategy, but they really don't understand this because this is not traditional IT, right? Um, but the, the other piece, which is really the, the question mark in all this, is, is the community, is the, the buyer ready for it? and how much can HP and others influence the buying mind, right? Because if they're not ready for it, you yeah, can so, have it. So let me ask you about Amazon. So, because obviously that, we're going to compare and contrast with that with Amazon, obviously public cloud, not private, not hybrid. Um, what, about, what is it about Amazon that, that you think impresses HP? Or even IBM or all the other vendors sitting back going, damn, these guys are killing it. Because they are, Amazon yeah. is just dominating the public cloud space. What, what impresses you about Amazon, and what do you think impresses HP as they look at Amazon as kind of the gold standard of their approach, a design spec? Well, I mean, number one is, is Amazon, from a perspective of um, public cloud, they are, the, they are the dominant public cloud player today. There's, there's no question in that, and I don't know anyone that would argue with that point. So I think the first step is they're a competitor to HP Cloud, right? So how do we compete to it? But they also have a well-established uh, ecosystem within their bubble, but they have a well-established ecosystem of different solutions that work around the Amazon solution. HP has to do the same thing. They have to start building that out. So 
one of the problems is, you know, kind of first market mover advantage, right? Yeah. Amazon's way ahead of the rest of the pack. And so the question is, how can you, if you're HP, or any of the others, how can you start to catch up and actually maybe even yeah. leapfrog what they're doing? Well, certainly they got to win the developer market and win the DevOps, or as we say, it's more cloud ops because they're DevOps is a unique breed of, uh, of developer in the, in the hyperscale. Tim, thanks for coming on inside theCUBE. Uh, it's Crawford, uh, great to have you on theCUBE. Obviously participating in our crowd chats is always fun too as well. Thought leader, um, great uh, person on Twitter to follow. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>